welcome to our series of videos in which we will be providing step-by-step -step instructions on how to operate a factory fitted GPS pilot steering system using an S10 terminal on an Axion 850. The first chapter will focus on a brief introduction to the steering system, highlighting what needs to be observed in terms of the basic settings. After starting up the terminal, we must first select which language we wish to use. Once this is complete, we read and confirm the warning message. The start menu then opens. We can create a new job, load previous jobs, continue the last job, or skip the menu here. Let us first get an overview of the working screen. The first thing we see at the bottom right are the settings for the auto turn option. The main menu is located directly next to this, and the camera menu is to the left of that. In the center, we can see the area recording. To the left of this is the status display for the steering system, which for example indicates whether the steering system is activated or deactivated. This status display also provides further information based on your requirements. The P in the view indicates that the steering system pre-activation function is set. The red exclamation mark indicates that not all parameters are yet green in the status overview of the navigation controller. By briefly pressing the exclamation mark, the status menu will open. All important parameters are presented to, to you in a clear structure with three groups here. Once we have successfully configured all the GPS pilot settings, all points will then turn green. To the left of this, we can see the track planning menu, the headland button, the mapping options, and the Isobus menu. At the top left, we can override the automatic partial width control for the section control option if necessary. Above this, there is a drop-down menu in which we can select which process data of the individual implements is to be displayed. At the top right, there is an extendable overview which, for example, includes information on the job, the field size, the area that has already been worked and the current ground speed. We can also see the availability and quality of the correction signal here, which should be green under ideal conditions. Alongside the autopilot button on the C-Motion multifunction control lever, we can also activate the steering system via this orange button on the right of the terminal. We can use this button to open the favorites menu, which can be individually customized. These two buttons allow us to increase or decrease the brightness of the terminal. To be able to work with the steering system, we first need to set up our tractor and the implement. Then we must draw up a new job and create a track guidance line. In the first step, we check whether the correct vehicle has been selected and the correct dimensions have been entered. To do this, we open the vehicles menu and select the vehicle profile of the Axion 850 that has already been created. The profile includes the vehicle name, the vehicle type, the valve type of the steering system, the vehicle dimensions, as well as the calibration, the sensitivity and aggressiveness. The dimensions have already been entered in full for this vehicle. If you are unsure, you should me measure the dimensions of the vehicle again, as different tyres can cause deviations. These deviations can later lead to inaccuracies in the field. Today we are going to work with a mounted short disc harrow. To do this, we open the device menu. Here we can select the current device, create a new device, select a previously created device from the list, import or export devices via a USB flash drive, and if necessary, also delete devices. We now click on the current device to edit the settings of our short disk harrow. In this menu, we define the type of attachment and then access the device settings. With this piece of equipment, it is important to enter the actual working width as well as the working position and the axle position. If you are in any way unsure, it is a good idea to measure these again.
With this short disc harrow, we have measured a working width of precisely 6.48 meters. So we now enter this value in the screen. In the geometry menu, we entered the measured values for both the working position and axle position and then click on the finish button. With certain devices, it is also necessary to take into account a side pull, which can be entered in the form of a lateral offset. To use the optional auto turn function, we can then perform a one-off calibration of the implement created here in this menu. In order to now use the automatic steering function, we still need to toggle the main switch for the autopilot module on the side of the console from road travel to field work, so that this valve is energized. To do so, we move this switch into the lower position. In order for this to work, it is important that the tractor is at standstill and the steering wheel is not moved. In the final step, we now create a job. This is required before we can actually start work. To do so, we open the job menu. Here we can open the current job, create a new job, select previous jobs from a list, use templates, import or export jobs, rename jobs, delete entries, and close the current job. We then click on new job and can now either enter all important job specific data or simply start the job. To get started on the actual work, we first have to create a track guidance line. We will show you how to do this in the next chapter.